Hello and welcome. On US 2024 election, Trump uses Biden's re-election troubles, Max Harris as fallback. US Intel says Russia prefers Trump in 2024 race. Democrats debate Biden's fitness. Seventh lawmaker urges race exit. Russian court orders absentia arrest of Yulia Navalnaya. And Biden strongly defends NATO at summit with leaders. Stay with me for these and more stories. On U.S. election 2024, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has seized on the opera surrounding United States President Joe Biden's re-election campaign, mockingly praising the Democrat for choosing his vice president as an insurance policy against him being replaced. Trump, while addressing supporters in Miami, Florida on Tuesday, said Biden had made the brilliant decision to appoint Vice President Kamala Harris as his running mate to avoid any challenge to his faltering candidacy. If Joe had picked someone even halfway competent, they would have bounced him from office years ago. But they can't because she's got to be their second choice, the ex-president said, claiming Democrats are having a full-scale breakdown over who should be the nominee. Trump also challenged Biden to redeem himself after last month's stumbling debate performance by participating in another debate or a round of golf. Biden campaign jokes spokesperson James Singer said the president was too busy leading the country to respond to Trump's weird antics. Since the January 27th debate, Biden and his team have been scrambling to assuage doubts about his electability during which the 81-year-old Democrat continually tripled over his words and appeared to lose his train of thought. Democratic lawmakers on Tuesday met privately to deliberate Biden's campaign amid persistent fears about fiscal and mental fitness. While top Democrats, including Senate Majority Leader Chuck Skoma, reiterated their support for Biden, Mikey Sherrill, a House representative from New Jersey, became the seventh elected member of a party to publicly call on him to step aside. Biden, who is trailing Trump nationally and, and in major swing states in the elections, has repeatedly dismissed calls for him to quit the race, and it is unlikely that Democrats will be able to force him out against his will. Harris has been broadly tipped as the most likely replacement for Biden if he does step aside, although she has not fared much better than her boss in the polls. Still on U.S. 2024 elections, a U.S. intelligence official has said Russia again favors Republican Donald Trump as its preferred candidate to win the U.S. presidential election this year. The official briefing on U.S. election security was careful not to mention the ex-president and presumptive Republican nominee when asked who Moscow wants to see as the next U.S. president. But he signaled that Russia favored Trump, adding that the U.S. intelligence community has not changed its assessments of Moscow's preference from former elections. We have not observed a shift in Russia's preferences for the presidential race from past elections, given the role of the U.S. is playing with regard to Ukraine and broader policy toward Russia, the official from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, ODNI, said on Tuesday. Earlier assessments found that Moscow had tried through influence campaigns to help Trump win in 2016 against Hillary Clinton and in the 2020 campaign which he lost to current U.S. President Joe Biden. So far, the U.S. has not identified plans by any country to de degrade or disrupt the country's ability to hold the presidential polls in November, officials said at the briefing attended by the ODNI. FBI and the National Coordination Tour for Critical Infrastructure Security and Resilience, an agency that conducts cyber defense for the U.S. government and private industry. But Russia, the ODNI official said, continues through social media and other means to try to influence specific groups of U.S. voters in battleground states by promoting divisive narratives and denigrate specific politicians whom he did not name. Moscow determines which candidates they were willing to support or oppose hugely based on their stance toward further U.S. support to Ukraine and connected issues, the officials said. The Trump election campaign responded to the assessment of Russian support, saying Biden was weak on Russia as proven by Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. When President Trump was in the Oval Office, Russia and all of America's adversaries were deterred because they feared how the United States would respond, Caroline Levitt, the Trump campaign's press secretary, said in a statement, 
Trump has regularly criticized the scale of U.S. military support for Ukraine, which stands at some 60 billion U.S. dollars since Russia's full-scale invasion in 2022 began. He has also called Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky the greatest salesman ever. Two of Trump's national security advisors have presented plans to end U.S. military aid to Ukraine unless Kiev opens discussions with Russia to end the war. Talking politics, Democratic Party lawmakers have met privately to deliberate United States President Joe Biden's crisis-stricken re-election bid as questions continue to stir around the president's physical and mental fitness. On Tuesday, the closed door talks focused on ongoing divisions within the party over Biden's electability following his decisions and disastrous debate performance last month against Republican challenger Donald Trump. Addressing reporters before and after the meeting, prominent Democrats, including Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, reiterated their support for Biden. While the discussions seem to put paid to be the possibility of a mass revolt against Biden's candidacy, at least for now, they fail to present a united front. Dick Durbin of Illinois said, it still remains to be seen whether Biden will stay on the ticket. Steve Cohen of Tennessee said, we are not even in the same book when asked whether Democrats were all on the same page. Hours after the talks, Mickey Sherrill, a Democratic representative from New Jersey, became the seventh elected Democrat to publicly call on Biden to drop out of the race in a statement. While stopping short of calling on Biden to step aside, Lori Turan, Trahan, rather, a House representative for Massachusetts, also added her voice to those stating worries about his ability to beat Trump. Biden A1 has crumbled to show up support within his party since his faltering debate performance on June 27th reignited long-standing concerns about his age and health. Biden on Monday said in a letter to congressional Democrats that he's firmly committed to staying in this race, to running this race to the end, and to beating Donald Trump. Biden faces a hard road to re-election with recent opinion polls suggesting Trump is in the lead both nationally and in the battleground states that will decide the outcome. Away from political and electoral matters now on judicial matters, a court in Moscow has ordered Yulia Navalnaya, the wife of late Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny, to be detained in absentia, her spokesperson said on Tuesday. The Basmani District Court in Moscow accused Navalnaya of participation in an extremist organization, her spokesperson Kira Yamarish said. She had also been added to an international wanted list, according to a report. In addition, the court granted a request by the investigative committee of the Russian Federation to detail Navalnaya. The period of detention will be calculated from the moment of possible extradition to Russian territory or from her detention on Russian territory across, according to a press release. Navalnaya does not live in Russia. On February 16th, Alexei Navalny died in the penal colony in Siberia, where he was serving a 19-year sentence after being found guilty of forming an extremist community, financing extremist activities, activists rather, and various other crimes in August. He was already serving sentences of 11 and a half years in a maximum security facility on fraud and other charges he had always denied and claimed were politically motivated. Navalny was Russia's highest profile opposition leader and spent years criticizing Putin, who has been in power for closely a quarter of a century at great personal risk. His death came weeks before the country's presidential polls scheduled to commence nationwide on March 15th, which is broadly seen by the international community as little more than a formality that would secure Putin a fifth term in our power. Navalny's death was met with grave and rage across the world as 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 well as inside Russia, where the smallest act of political dissent carried huge risks. He returned to Russia in 2021 from Germany, where he had been treated after being poisoned with Nivochok, a Soviet air nerve agent. On arrival, Navalny was quickly arrested on charges he dismissed as politically motivated and spent the rest of his life in prison. In February, his wife Yulia Navalnaya accused Russian President Vladimir Putin of being responsible for his death and showed she will pick up her husband's mantle for a happy and beautiful Russia. 
Now, Joe Biden, United States President, has received NATO leaders to Washington, D.C. with a forceful speech that appeared pitched to reassure allies overseas and closer to home that he can fight off an election challenge from Donald Trump. In brief but powerfully delivered remarks at the opening of the summit, the president declared the military alliance more powerful than ever as it faced a pivotal moment with the war between Russia and Ukraine, warning that autocrats had overturned global order. Biden announced more military support for Kyiv. The U.S. president and the leaders of Germany, Italy and the Netherlands and Romania are donating Patriot missile batteries and other systems to strengthen Ukraine's besieged air defenses. NATO plans to donate five strategic air defense systems and dozens of smaller strategic anti-air batteries over the coming year in total, the White House said. The announcement comes two days after a Russian missile leveled the children's hospital in the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. Some 43 people were killed across the country in Monday's attack, with over 100 more wounded, officials said. President Volodymyr Zelensky has spent months beseeching his Western allies to ramp up supplies of air defenses. Biden spoke, spoke rather for closely 30 minutes in a clear voice and marked a difference from his fumbling tone during last month's presidential debate with Trump. Congressional Democrats, meanwhile, met privately to debate Biden's leadership of the party and the mood was sad, lawmakers said, according to report. Biden's team has responded by trying to show that the 81-year-old remains energetic enough to handle the demands of the presidency. The White House has credited Biden's leadership for the expansion of NATO since Russia invaded Ukraine two years ago, with Finland and Sweden joining the alliance. On more stories now on Israel-Gaza conflict, Israeli air raids killed 29 at Gaza displaced camp. Hospital officials say at least 29 Palestinians have been killed and dozens others injured in an Israeli airstrike on a camp for displaced people outside a school in southern Gaza. The strike had hit next to the gate of al Wadi school in the town of Abbas, Abbasan al kabura east of the city of Kanyaunis. Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry said the Israeli military said it had used precise munitions to target a terrorist from Hamas's military wing, who is said had taken part in the 7th October attack on Israel. Israel was looking into the reports that civilians were harmed adjacent to al Awada school, which houses displaced people from the eastern villages of Kanyonis. The incident comes a week after the Israeli military ordered civilians to evacuate Abbas and al kabira and other areas of eastern Kanyonis, triggering thousands or tens of thousands to flee. According to report, Witnesses said the area was teeming with displaced people at the time and who recounted the bloody aftermath in graphic detail. The attack resulted in extensive damage and the deaths of women and children, according to the witnesses. Body parts were scattered across the site and many people staying in tents outside the school were also wounded. The Israeli military launched a campaign in Gaza to destroy the Hamas group in reaction so an unprecedented attack on southern Israel on 7th October, during which around 1,200 people were killed and 251 others were taken hostage. Over 38,240 people have been killed in Gaza since then, according to the territory's Hamas-run health ministry. Now on climate crisis, historic burial worries for casters about future events. Beryl just shattered all prospects of what an early season hurricane could become and it has experts feared for what will be coming next. Early season storms typically aren't indicative of what's to come later in the season because the needed atmospheric conditions for powerful storms aren't yet in place. But Beryl broke the mold. Phil Klotzbach, a hurricane expert and research scientist at Colorado State University, said according to reports that normally... Early season storm activity doesn't tell us much about what is going to happen the rest of the time. The busiest part of Atlantic hurricane season doesn't typically start until mid-August and peaks in September. But burial, which originally formed in late June, behaved like it already arrived. The water burial raced through as warm as it should be in September, so it behaved like a September hurricane. It's something forecasters cautioned that could happen even before the season got underway. Ocean temperatures in the Atlantic Basin remain historically warm 
and have been for over a year mainly where burial first became a hurricane warm oceans are a major consequences consequence of world warming due to fossil fuel pollution and provide a fuel for tropical systems to explode in strength at a breakneck pace burial quickly strengthened faster than any other storm on record this early in the season when its winds surged by 65 mph in just 24 hours are causing to close bash rapid increases becoming more likely as the climate crunch advances according to mona hamati a postdoctoral research scientist at columbia university's climate school burials early and rapid intensification is indicative of the types of extreme weather event we may see more frequently in a warming world burial encapsulates many of the fears and scientists have for this hurricane season hamati said the storm took advantage of severely warm waters and eventually fortified into the atlantic's earliest category 5 hurricane on record one of many milestones no other early july hurricane has ever reached i'll take a quick break and when i come back stories from Nigeria. don't go anywhere <music> You're welcome back. Now, stories from Nigeria. We begin with Tinibu establishes livestock development ministry. On Tuesday, President Bola Ahmed Tinibu announced the creation of the Federal Ministry of Livestock Development. The president announced while inaugurating the renewed Hope Livestock Reform Implementation Committee at the presidential villa in Abuja. But President Tinibu did not mention the name of the minister for the new ministry as it is anticipated that he has to forward the name to the Senate for screening and confirmation of its new nominee. The Vice President Kashin Shatima, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation SGF, Senator George Akume, the Chief of Staff to the President Femi Bajabi Amila, amongst cabinet members were present at the inauguration. Remember that on 15 September 2023, President Tinubu approved the formation of the Presidential Committee dedicated to the reform of the livestock industry and the provision of long-term solutions to recurring clashes between headers and farmers in the country. The setting up of the committee was a sequel to the submission of a report from the National Conference on Livestock Reforms and Mitigation of Associated Conflicts in Nigeria. Now, Rep. 6 Samoa deal holds as NBA disputes same-sex charge Yesterday, the Nigeria Boer Association NBA defended the federal government endorsement of the Samoa Agreement, declaring it contained no clause on same-sex marriage. Jacobo Mikel, son, president of the NBA, paddled into the argument surrounding the deal as the House of Representatives asked the federal government to hold the implementation of the agreement signed by the country on June 28, 2024. The lawmakers also resolved to probe the agreement. Named after the Pacific Island nation of Samoa, where it was signed on November 15, 2023, by the European Union and its member states and the African, Caribbean and Pacific countries, the agreement serves as the new legal framework for the EU relations with 79 countries comprising 48 African, 16 Caribbean and 15 Pacific countries. The agreement targets to boost the cap capacity of the EU and the ACP countries to tackle global challenges together. It lays down common principles and covers the following six priority areas, democracy and human rights, sustainable economic growth and development, climate change, human and social development, peace and security, and migration and mobility. Other areas covered in the agreement include human and social development, access to social services, education, health, food security and improved nutrition, water, sanitation services and housing, social cohesion and protection, population and development, women development and involvement of youths in the implementation of policies affecting them. Also, the partnership covered decent work, demography, culture and sustainable development, cultural diversity and mutual understanding, cultural heritage and creative sectors, mobilization of sustainable and responsible investment, investment facilitation and protection and other critical areas last week reports alleged that the agreement contained a clause to legalize lesbian gay bisexual transgender and queer relations 
LGBTQ in Nigeria, adding that the government agreed to support same sex relations to obtain 150 billion US dollars loan. But the allegation was stoutly denied by the Minister of Information, Mohammed Idris, Minister of Information and Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Abubakar Bagudu, at a press conference in Abuja on Saturday. Bagudu debunked that the agreement contained an LGBTQ clause expressing that the partnership with the EU seeks to resolve peculiar issues of each region based on universally accepted international laws, conventions and treaties applicable to the parties. And finally on the news, ICPC chief laments widespread school sexual harassment. Dr. Musa Ali Yusan, the chairman of the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, has bewailed the prevalence of sexual harassment in primary and secondary schools in Nigeria. He noted that sexual harassment is not a menace peculiar to tertiary institutions alone, as it is on the increase in primary and secondary schools. On Tuesday, Aliyu stated this in Abuja at a one-day national stakeholders engagement on sexual harassment prevention, which was organized by the Commission in collaboration with the Gender Mobile Initiative. The engagement was intended to ensure that the model policy for tertiary institutions does not end up like many others that require it to be sufficiently implemented. Ali stated that sexual harassment and other connected societal ills such as gender discrimination are tarnishing the nation's reputation. He added that until there is a heavy consequence for offenders, the menace will continue to be on the rise. He added that anyone irrespective of status, designation, or gender, staff or student can be a victim of sexual harassment. He recalled that following the Commission's commitment to tackling all forms of corruption, including abuse of office via sexual harassment, with the support of the Ford Foundation, ICPC executed a project intended at curbing the societal malaise a few years ago. He noted that the Commission, in the spirit of partnership, engaged the gender mobile initiative to draft a model policy for tertiary institutions adding that the federal ministry of education approved the policies of the primary and tertiary institutions the minister of women affairs mrs uju kennedy said in her remarks steps are being put in place to address the menace of sexual harassment in the country through the establishment of mobile courts for proper prosecution of the perpetrators she said the ministry is working in collaboration with hotel owners to deny access to underage children from lodging i report any such attempts to security operatives to curb the terrible sexual harassment plaguing the society another look at the top stories trump is uses biden's re-election troubles mox harris as fallback u.s intel says russia prefers trump in 2024 race Democrats debate Biden's fitness. Seventh lawmaker urges race exit. Russian court orders absentia arrest of Yulia Navalnaya. And Biden strongly defends NATO at summit with leaders. And that's all on the news. Thanks for watching. Till next time.